again, Peg Baker, and welcome again to Little Bug Studio. My project for today is a set of placemats for my dining room table. The focus of this lesson, however, is going to be on the interfacing and bonding agent that I'll be using. The placemats will be reversible, and I want them to be washable, too. So let's get started on this project. It's pretty simple. It goes kind of quickly, and your dining room table will look fabulous. Let's get started. Two fabrics for my placemat one for side A, one for side B. Our placemat is 18 by 13 finished, so I cut these 19 by 14 each. That way we'll have a half inch seam allowance all the way around. So the interfacing is from uh, Stitch and Sew. It's cut to the exact size of my placemat, 18 by 13, and I've also washed this. So I've taken my interfacing and I'm going to apply the heat and bond. The heat and bond would be cut to the same dimensions. In this particular case, this is my last placemat, and I had to piece together the remaining heat and bond, but not a problem. It works just fine. So I've lined up the part that I could on this side, and I'm going to apply some uh, extra heat and bond strips on the side and use this material to uh, efficiently. <laughs> so again, a medium iron, no steam, two seconds for the initial bonding. So now this is nice and cool. Remove these little strips of paper. And you'll see that the uh, adhesive has adhered and it's ready to take fabric. I'm going to start with this pretty piece, but in order to line it up properly with the interfacing, I need to turn it so that the pretty side is against the table, or if you prefer, right side, wrong side. Here's my interfacing. You can see the adhesive. We want that toward the wrong side of the fabric. We need to flip it over and iron it. You could pin this down, but you can also get a, a good grip on the corners and just flip it over, smooth it out, and again your medium iron, no steam, start in the center. This time hold your iron on for six seconds. Be sure those corners get a, a good bond. Let's let that cool completely before we handle it. And I'll take the part that we bonded and I'm going to lay it on the pretty side of this fabric and the pretty side of this fabric are going to go together. So let's line these up. And in this case now, you will need a few pins. And I don't want it to shift. I also need to leave an opening for turning this. And I'm going to make it a generous one because this fabric is this interfacing stiff and we're going to need some room to do that. So I'm going to put a pin here and a pin here. There we go. And I think I'm going to put one right here in the center too. So when we go to the machine, We'll start sewing here. This is where our opening is, and I'll show you how to stitch close to this interfacing. So I'm bringing my material over, and I'm going to lower my presser foot at the end of this area that we want to have open. So I'm going to be sewing with my needle just a scant eighth of an inch away from the edge of the interfacing so that when I turn it there's enough fabric to actually wrap around the thickness of the interfacing. So now that I have it lined up I'm going to back tack and carefully sew. I'm using a small stitch whip Carefully turn that corner with a pivot. And 
don't want to sew onto the inner facing or too close to it. So you can see here, it's a scant eighth of an inch. finish up with a back tack and then inspect the work. Back from the sewing machine. I'm going to pull the pins out and see how we did. Here's the opening that we left so we can turn it and quickly I am going to just snip some of these threads. Keep it nice and neat. I want to trim the corners be careful not to trim the actual stitching. Close, but not too close. And then I also want to press this back a little bit. So when it's time to sew it, it already has a fold in it. We're ready to put our next piece of heat and bond on. So here's our interfacing heat and bond, and we'll apply it like we did the first time. Starting off with a medium iron, no steam, start in the middle, a couple of seconds, move it over to the next spot. And then give it about a minute or two to cool off. Now that it's cool, we can remove this paper. And again, you'll see that the, the adhesive is bonded onto the inner face. So now, if there's going to be a tricky part to this project at all, it's turning this thing inside out. Because it's so stiff, and you'll also find that this unbonded piece of fabric will tend to want to stretch. So let's try and be careful with that too. I'm just going to reach in, put my fingers right here on this tip, hold the inner facing and the corner, and push it through together. Make sure that that inner facing is caught in there. So there's one corner, and let's reach over to the next corner. I'm going to pinch the interfacing and the whole corner and just push it in. I've got my finger on the other side. I want all of that interfacing and the seam allowance to go in there together. I've kind of pressed it a little bit with my thumb. You can't see that because it's stuck in there. Same thing with this one. And the last one, make sure you hold on to that interfacing with your finger. It's bonded on there, but just in case, we don't want it slipping out. Okay, so we've got the corners turned. Now we just need to reach in and pull this whole thing through. And as the first time I did this, I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to turn into a one big wrinkly mess. And I can assure you, it does not do that, as you will soon see. There we go. Now it's starting to look like something. So here's our opening. And uh, you can see that's the shiny adhesive side. And in order to make this lie down flat, I'm going to take my iron and very carefully 
tack this seam allowance. I don't want to get my iron on this uh, adhesive, but this will make sewing this down a little bit easier by tacking this seam down and it's catching the adhesive. It's just going to make it easier to close up that seam. So that's down there nicely. Now let's fold this under. Because it hasn't been stabilized, it's this opening stretched a little bit. And that's a natural occurrence. So we're going to press it on this corner. Still, I'm not really ready to adhe adhere the fabric yet. I just want to give that a nice neat look. Now we put adhesive on this side. As soon as you take the iron and press it down, this fabric is going to bond to that interfacing. I want to make sure that there's it's nice and smooth and there's nothing wrong with the corners and the flip side looks good. Pull this little thread out. And uh, there we go. We don't want one side rolling over to the other. It will occur to some degree because of the thickness of the interfacing, but we don't want it to be excessive. Okay, I think we're ready. So I'm going to take my iron in the center, hold it down for six seconds, and then move on. So now that we've finished bonding that, applying the heat, let's let it cool completely before we handle it again. My placemat is now nice and cool and there's only one step left and that's sewing this opening closed. You could certainly do that by hand. You could certainly use a fabric adhesive like a glue to close that. But I think, you know, placemat's going to get a lot of use, it's going to get a lot of washing, and it really needs to have a secure closure. I'm going to take this to the machine and just do a top stitching very close to the edge all the way around. I'll be right back and you can see what our finished placemat looks like. So here's my placemat back from the sewing machine and you can see I've got a very tiny, narrow line of top stitching very, very close to the corner. And uh, now let's check it out and see how it looks. I've got my plate, silverware, and another piece of fabric from this beautiful collection, um, my napkin. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope it's inspired you to make something beautiful. Thanks a lot.